Hi, my name is Ben. We've talked before. This is going to be a very hard video for me to make. You know, I'd made several preliminary presentations and they just got too lengthy. So this is no presentation. I'm just going to do this ad lib. This is a very special idea that I'm going to throw at you today. If you have deep vein thrombosis, and I do, I have femoral deep vein thrombosis going from the common femoral uh, vein all the way to the popliteal under the knee. Massive thrombosis. They tell me that this won't go away for one to two years at best and that these blood clots are there to stay because they are now covered with thrombin and thrombonectin and all sorts of things. Anyway, those things aren't going anywhere soon. I just met with my vascular specialist and he said there isn't any option that I have. They can't inject thrombolytics to dissolve it. They can't use any of the other fancy tools that I'd mentioned. Basically, he said, if we caught this, or if you had caught it in the first two to three weeks, we might have been able to look at some options. But right now, he said, you don't have it. Well, that, that kind of discouraged me. So I started trying to come up with ideas. I was just a couple months out with my blood clot, almost crawling on the floor to move around, not getting anywhere. I did a lot of research on the internet. Here's what I've come up with. Now, again, I am not a doctor, so don't do as I'm saying. I'm just trying to relate my experience. You choose what you want to do. But I'm very aggressive. I cannot accept the fact that I'm going to be a cripple for one to two years. That ain't going to happen. That's not in my book. Okay, I came across some interesting material. On the internet, I have found that several leading universities, for instance, Stanford is one of them, there's a lot of research that's been done uh, in the area of angiogenesis, that's creating new vein growth. Now, unfortunately, they, they do this on mice, and it looks like they're going to be continuing to use mice for many years because that's where the grant money is. But the bottom line is they have found that two primary things uh, create vein growth. One is a natural hormone called VEGF, and your body actually produces that, uh, and it's produced uh, because your, your muscles aren't getting enough oxygen. When your body says, you know, we don't have enough oxygen, your, your body tries to compensate. The other are your body has nicotinic receptors, which respond to a number of stimuli, but one of the things, obviously, that they respond to is nicotine. And study with mice have shown that this is a very powerful factor for creating angiogenesis. Now, you're not going to get anybody, at least I wasn't able to get anybody at any of these university research groups to even want to comment on human trials. If they have them, they won't admit it. And the first thing they're going to tell you is, oh, no, don't do it. You know, it's never been done before. Well, guess what, Jack? I did it, and I'm working on it, and I don't really think it's helping. But let me point this out, first of all. If you have uh, a known cancer or something like that, uh, tumor, whatever, don't try this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to propose to you that you tell your doctor you want to get on Nicorette gum. Now, that's a non-prescription. You can get it in this form from Kroger's. This is called nicotine gum. I started out with four milligrams. That's the maximum they have. I take four of these chewing tablets a day. I try to take them when I'm going to do my exercise. Now, I didn't start this until about three months into my deep vein thrombosis. I was getting a little better with my thrombosis, being able to move around, but I hit a plateau and I wasn't getting anywhere. So then I came upon the research, started chewing these. Anyway, long story short, something's working. When I first started out three and a half months ago, I was trying to get back on my inline skates. I used to skate marathons. Well, the first time I went out, and this is three and a half months post-thrombosis after I got released from the hospital. I could only skate one-eighth of a mile. Today, I got back from my skating, and I was able to skate four miles. Now, that's a 32-fold increase. That's phenomenal. The only thing is, I don't know how much of it is due to the nicotine, and I don't know how much of it would be due to the normal hypoxia-induced uh, angiogenesis. 
but something's working. So I'm trying it, and if you all decide to try it on your own, uh, I would like to know your results. Now, I do want to mention this. If you do decide to try it, you need to have a strong exercise program because in order for your body to put to use nicotine, you have to have a demand. Your muscles have to know that there's a starvation of oxygen there. So you need to walk and exercise until you feel the pain, brother, until you can't go any further. That's why in one of my early videos I said take a chair with you, a folding chair, and a cane, and yada, yada. Uh, I still today, I, I took a cane with me after I skated. I did uh, some uh, step exercises running up the hillside and uh, just short of, you know, getting a... a cardiovascular collapse, I, I kind of push myself. But you need to develop hypoxia. If you're going to tiptoe around and you're going to just kind of gingerly treat yourself, this video is not for you and I wish you the best. But if you're willing to be aggressive and try something new, then by all means, try this. Now your doctor's going to say things like, oh, don't do it, it's dangerous, uh, nicotine will constrict your vessels, uh, nicotine will cause hardening of your arteries and veins. I've heard all of that. Of course, I told my vascular specialist when he said, you know, it'll constrict your veins. That's what we want, Doc. We want those veins to be constricted to develop a higher head pressure so that that blood can force itself through, around, and over these blood clots so that your body can generate plenty of signals to produce new veins. Didn't get any comment on that. There's just so much built-in antagonism in the medical field, and mainly it's a liability thing. Your doctor in no way is going to be able to tell you, yeah, go ahead and try something really off the wall, and, you know, I just tell everybody I said it's okay. He's not going to do that. It's not going to happen. So if you do this, you just need to know that it's got to be your decision, your preemptive decision, and tell your doc you just want him to know about it. Now, once you do embark on this, you get these things from Kroger's. This is a box of, uh, what have we got here, 110 pieces. It costs $27 with tax. And you get these little things of gum. Uh, when I work out, uh, exercise hard, I'll put two of them in my mouth at once. I want to get a lot of nicotine there. Don't worry about whether you let it slowly dissolve or rapidly. You may get hiccups, yada, yada. Uh, find out what works for you. I haven't had any problem. Uh, I don't have any cravings or anything like that. I'm not getting addicted to it. None of that's happening. The only side effect that I can account for is I'm growing a lot of extra hair. I, I didn't anticipate that, but uh, you can see uh, I'm not bald. A year ago, I was resigned to the fact that it looked like I was going to have to take these lonely few strands of hair and do a comb over or something like that. Uh, but now, maybe it's the exercise, maybe it's the new vein growth, but something's growing more hair. The other thing I want to mention, you're going to find that uh, your middle name with a deep vein thrombosis, your middle name is going to be Mr. Tired. Again, let me emphasize how, how good I think it is to have something like either an oxygen machine or better yet, a CPAP machine. Because when you get through exercising, you can come inside, lay down, put the CPAP machine over yourself, and you don't have to work anymore at making your chest breathe and get that air in. I get the same benefit from a CPAP as I do from an oxygen machine. Now, the thing I want to leave with you, I'm going to try to put as much information on the text part of this video as I can, but I want you to let me know your results because the world needs to start finding out if human trials can, can produce some results because the, the science industry is certainly not going after it. So let's charge ahead with that. and. Uh, uh, let, let's have our, our tea party of, you know, new ideas and, you know, new things. Well, I hope this helps. Uh, I don't know what else to add. I have had a second Doppler, and the, <clears throat> the Doppler indicated at six months out that I still had minimal improvement. Now, minimal improvement means I could not detect uh, any, any uh, noticeable blood flow going through. But... The fact that I can increase my skating 32 times over what it was three months ago tells me I've developed a lot of collateral veins. And I can see new veins growing up, superficial veins that are uh, collateralizing the load on those deep veins. 
So I know I'm developing new veins, and it's taken a lot of that load. So my idea seems to be working. Also know that if it wasn't safe, Nicorette sure wouldn't be, or Kroger gum sure wouldn't be telling you, go ahead and quit smoking this way. So don't buy into all of those arguments that your doctor and everybody's going to tell you. My vascular specialist, when I said, is it okay if I take these, or am I going to need to worry about getting uh, hardened veins and all sorts of problems, as long as I stay fit and I don't do it more than a year, he said, you shouldn't have any problem. Okay. I hope this helps, and I'm anxious to hear from you and see what your results are. Uh, email me or however you do it on the Internet. I'm not too, too savvy with this Internet stuff yet. Thank you, and have a great day.